I was fitting up the uh, fuel pump for the belly tank and I got the lines made up for it to run from the fuel pump up to the wing tank and I was gonna try to figure out how to to make up the line to go from the fuel pump to the belly tank well I thought I'd dry fit the fuel tank up to the airplane now I'd ask um, probably about 20 different people whether this fuel tank could uh, be mounted up to this airframe or not and I was assured that it was just a simple bolt on up bolt up to it and I kind of knew that it wasn't because this airframe is uh, four inches wider than the standard airframe and I don't know whether it's just a standard four inches over the whole thing or or what exactly how it compares but these straps that go on here there's no way that the ones off the standard airframe are going to fit on here if it's four inches wider so I knew that wasn't going to work and I was kind of curious as to how this filler neck was going to work here because it's pretty tight to that lower longeron on the existing fuselage on the standard fuselage this is where the flying wires go from the fuselage down to the floats so there that, that's where it's going to line up is right there and uh, to get this thing centered uh, on the center line of the fuselage this uh, fuel filler neck there's no way it's going to work it it bumps right up against that lower longeron so there's uh, not too many options here. Um, I call. I just got off the phone with uh, Airglass, uh, who makes this fuel tank, to see what they had to say about it. And they said they, they've never even thought about making a fuel tank to match up for this fuselage or to modify this one, this fuel tank, to fit. They do have a combination fuel tank cargo compartment that they can make up that they got approved and they can make up but they don't carry them in stock and that's approved for this fuselage but uh, the straight fuel tank they don't have so um, we're gonna have to see what we can do to modify this one a couple of options one is to build some kind of a spacer for it to fit between the fuselage or the fuel tank and to space it off no, that really won't work either because then your flying wires that go down to the floats are going to be out of position on it. We have to do some kind of combination. Maybe take this filler neck out and have a filler neck made up and modified to come out at more of a sweep and then come up. And uh, that's the only option I can see. So it's one more thing that. Uh, they lied to me about or didn't get right on this airframe is this this uh, standard air glass it's an LT32 PA18 which is a standard 32 gallon auxiliary fuel tank for a, a Super Cub uh, will not fit on this airframe and air glass has no plans to make one to fit or any modifications to this one to adapt it to this airframe so we're kind of on our own here as far as that goes I'm trying to figure out what to do next here now and I guess the thing to do is to check probably clear all of the paint off of this filler neck and uh, remove the filler neck from the from the tank also gonna have to make up new straps for this thing that's that's a given those hanger straps are, are no way they're gonna fit. Well, I just talked to my mechanic and we're gonna go ahead with trying to modify this uh, fuel tank to fit on that belly of the airplane and so I've got it out here I drained all the last vestiges of the fuel out of it and let it drain and, uh, one of the things that uh, happened is this uh, fuel quick drain is down here right on the belly and that's right where all the water and condensation and everything kind of collects on that and I've cleaned it up several times um, I tried to get it out of there to replace the o-rings and stuff and it was pretty much froze in I uh, couldn't get it to turn and uh, put so much pressure on it that um, it was threatened to crack the fiberglass there now that has a bushing in there that that goes into that's fiberglassed in there it's aluminum bushing and it's got some pretty good corrosion on it it's always hard to uh, to uh, get a look at because it's on the belly of the airplane and you got to be upside down and the flying wires come out right here 
and interfere with it and so anyway it's hard to get in there to clean up and look at I uh, cleaned it up and it's got a lot of corrosion that must be an aluminum bushing that's fiberglassed in there it's corroded in there pretty good I cleaned it up um, real good and uh, you can see it's oh it's down in there an eighth of an inch in places or more where it's wore in there so I've had it sitting here like this uh, vertical for a couple of days and I was putting PB blaster and mixed with acetone in there to kind of help see if I could get that to loosen up because whatever the stickum was they used in there to uh, seal that up it uh, worked pretty good well anyway it's been there for a couple three days and I just put the wrench on it and I got it to turn pretty easy I was real happy and surprised with that so that part can come out so now this valve can get cleaned up and a new o-ring put on it and if I wire brush that and clean it all up and put a new o-ring on it it'll be just like new and uh, then I gotta see what I can do with this bushing there's not much left of it it wouldn't have lasted much longer Let's see you've got just a little bit left I don't remember how much of that stuck out but it seemed like it stuck out of there quite a ways now you can see how much damage there is there with from the corrosion so I'm gonna have to get that out of there and make up a new one and glue it in there well the other thing we're gonna do is uh, we go ahead and take the paint off of that filler neck and try to work that out of there um, that's fiberglass in there so that's the, the next step now I got this thing out of there so I'm happy with that didn't break anything and uh, but uh, putting acetone on there and uh, PB blaster the acetone will kind of uh, eat at whatever the uh, gookumpucky was they used in there for a thread sealer and uh, then the PB blaster pulled in there I didn't use heat or anything else on it just a, just a couple days of course that's uh, uh, corroded in there enough it had some pretty good pockets for all that stuff to sit in there it uh, didn't, didn't run off I've taken some paint stripper and stripped this uh, filler neck and uh, the boss that it uh, that it goes into here and um, it uh, of course they had the yellow um, polyurethane paint the uh, durethane paint on there and I think there was some Dell star on it too because I believe I might have painted it over it here once maybe not I don't know I thought I did some touch-up work on it but uh, anyway there was uh, that yellow paint on the surface and then there was white underneath it I'm not sure whether the white was paint or gel coat you can see this looks like gel coat here on the on the fiberglass and then this fillet around this uh, filler neck it's uh, I believe just uh, body putty Bondo. And there's some more here and crack and stuff here. And I'll do a little bit more um, work on it and get it whittled down and see what else is there. But I've got one spot in here where I dug the Bondo out and there's a pretty good gap in there. So it may be if I just get that Bondo out of there, we can see how to get that neck out of there. I've got the body putty off of there. That was a fillet around this neck and uh, in this groove right here they had that uh, filleted it in with body putty too um, we used a uh, paint uh, stripper to soften up the final bits of it there and get it off but it was pretty soft it chipped out okay now in the rest of that hole you can see the cutout they have for that it's a pretty good size cutout it's quite a bit bigger than the than the uh, tube that goes in there it, was you'd want it bigger to get enough uh, fiberglass resin in there to harden up to really glue it in good but that's what it's filled with now is fiberglass resin so we'll now I have to uh, get something and, and grind that resin out of there to get that loosened up well, I took a little Dremel tool with a die grinder bit and uh, ground out that uh, uh, resin that was in there and this hole cut out as much as I could and I got down and there's a flange uh, bent on the bottom part of that tube there uh, you can't really see it but I got down to that where the metal it bends out and uh, so anyway I tried uh, knocking it loose a little bit with a 
with a rawhide hammer and I couldn't get the thing to come loose at all and it was going to have to come out from the inside anyway so I uh, went ahead and cut a um, access hole here in a spot that was already one there and once I got this opened up in here and looked on the back side there's a big gob of resin and maybe uh, fiberglass mat or material too over that flange uh, in the metal that comes out of there it's doped up pretty good in there so there's no way that thing is just going to come out by tapping it out or anything and grinding it from this side I'm going to have to get in through the access hole there and, and uh, grind that material off from that uh, flange there from that boss there I got the filler neck out of the uh, fuel tank uh, used a combination I used a Dremel tool with a small uh, rotary bit in there and cut all the way around it until this back edge back here where it was too tight to get in and cut down as far as I could with it and got all the resin out of there that was in there now you can see the flange that we got down to that was in there so once I got down to the flange then I couldn't do any more with it so I took it down to the shop and got the die grinder with a sanding pad on it and uh, reached in from the inside and sanded down this uh, fiberglass and then I just was able to pop it off of there with my hand and now I can go ahead and fit that up on the airframe and uh, mock up a new filler got neck. The auxiliary fuel tank mounted up on the belly there. Um, it's lined up center line and stuff and it's mounted up fairly tight. It's, now this is the left side here and this is the side that the filler neck goes in. There's the hole for the filler neck and you can see how far back in there behind that longeron that is. The challenge is to get it get a new filler neck made up that can go in there and come out and clear underneath this longeron and then come up to where we can use it for a filler neck. The other question, even after we get it fixed, is there's the there's tubes there for the uh, flying wires, the diagonal brace uh, wires for the floats. They go down between the fuselage of the airplane here and uh, the rear strut on the float and uh, they, they stiffen it up and keep that uh, float rigid anyway they go down through those tubes or those tubes are for clearance of that that's going to be a question is how much the geometry changes on that uh, whether or not that's going to be able to uh, those uh, struts are going to be able to fit down through those holes or not but we we'll, can't do anything about that till we mount the floats on it a little bit more work on the uh, belly tank here getting it retrofitted for this wide body fuselage and I'd had it suspended using some of this packaging tape but uh, leaving it set overnight the packaging tape stretched way down and it was kind of hard to get it tightened up anyway to get that uh, thing positioned so I did what I should have done in the first place I went and got a couple of uh, these ratcheting tie down straps and, and put on here and I've got it strapped up there now. That pulls it up nice and tight. I was able to get it centered properly and uh, staying in position a lot better. So that uh, I should have done that in the first place. Worked on the uh, fuel filler neck a little bit more. I cleaned out in this uh, hole here for the filler neck. I, I uh, ground out some of the, the glass that they had uh, gobbed in there to hold that other filler neck in. Um, probably still get some more out of there, but it's it's uh, hard to do in here with it on the airplane. But that got the job done the way what I needed. Now I was trying to figure out some way to make a template or um, uh, a model or something to use to uh, to get a new filler neck made. And my first idea was to make up something and send it down. Um, south and have a radiator shop or, or muffler shop make me up something. Oh, this was the first idea that I had. I, I had this uh, two inch mailing tube here and I cut it off and started uh, cutting, just making some uh, some cutouts on it to, to bend it down so this could bend down. That would go in the hole 
this would clear the tube right here and then I was going to make another bend up this way well the dumb shit I went ahead and made my um, cutouts on the wrong side of the tube so that ruined that of course that was on a Friday evening and uh, nothing was open uh, I went to the to the hardware store and they didn't have any mailing tubes and uh, the drugstore didn't have any and the post office wasn't open and and uh, so anyway that uh, that screwed up that idea so then I went and got a piece of scat tube and you know it goes in there nice and everything and you can form it but you can't keep it to the shape so that didn't work um, and I uh, got this piece of uh, uh, PVC tubing and I figured well I can heat it up with a heat gun and kind of bend it to what shape I want and that was would have worked out okay but the PVC tube the water pipe is the outside diameter is quite a bit bigger than the two inch outside diameter of these steel pipes and stuff and the thickness of it is so thick that uh, it, uh, it made it tough to work with so that wouldn't work so, so I went ahead and and waited a, a day or so and then I went down to town and I went to uh, the drugstore and uh, they had a couple of mailing tubes here and I got a couple of two inch mailing tubes and then by uh, cleaning this hole out I was able to get the shape to fit a little better in there and didn't need it still needs to be kind of probably compressed down flattened out a little bit but I got my radius of my band made here and uh, the general uh, size that I want and though I was going to send this down to Washington to a radiator shop or to a friend of mine anyway the mechanic down there to have him take it to a radiator shop or a muffler shop and and make up see if they could custom bend to make up a, a tube like that but I had went by my local Napa store and in a town of 2,000 people you can't expect them to carry too much but they had a, a 90 pre-bent 90 in there and that that just fits uh, perfect and uh, so by making that template I was able to take that template down or that tube down to the Napa store and, and see that this fits now I'll probably go ahead and take this to my press and flatten this out just a little bit on this lower end so that it fits in there a little bit these are flared out on both ends uh, not flared but uh, swedged out on both ends so a pipe can fit down into them for, for making up an exhaust pipe but that's just perfect to this uh, this flared end on one end is uh, just the same size as what the old filler neck is so I can cut this uh, this uh, adapter here for the uh, for the gas cap off and slide it onto that and weld it on there and it'll this this is the old one by the way see the flange that it has on the bottom there where it came to hold the, the putty and stuff but there's no way that I could make that work in there. Okay. One of the other things that I might do on here is put a tube down through between the point where these this uh, fuel tank bends right here. It art has an arch in it or bend in it to follow the the uh, form of the fuselage, and so there's a, a spot here that's a low spot in the middle. Well, now on wheels, it's probably not a big deal because the tail sits down lower than the front end and um, so this side here that's uh, bent up here the angle up would be still nearly flatter or down a little bit but what we found out on the whipline and fib floats is they the fuselage sits flat and rainwater um, comes in follows the fuselage around or water uh, winds up accumulating and it gets on top of that fuel tank and it doesn't drain out it just stays in there and uh, keeps the bottom of the fuselage wet it actually fills up in the bottom of the fuselage so what they did on uh, the, uh, I'm flying an airplane right now with uh, whipline floats on it a cub and what they did on that was they uh, fiberglassed in a drain tube in the center of this uh, fuel tank um, and I haven't noticed that as being a problem on this airplane with it on floats when it sits it's on the ramp with the tail down at a pretty good angle 
but it uh, there was quite a bit of corrosion in the belly of the airplane at uh, possibility that it could have been from water accumulated on top of that fuel tank. Uh, so anyway, as long as I've got it apart, I might as well do that. As long as we're fiberglass in any way, it doesn't hurt anything to go ahead and put a drain tube in there.